story begins in a yarn shop, where I first met a friend I had already known for a long time. We played with a drum carter, and with that blended fiber, I spun and wove my first hand-spun, hand-woven cloth. It changed my life. When we create cloth by hand, we capture that moment in the weave and twist. So I wondered, what would it be like to make a scarf like this today? 13 years later, what choices would I make? And what is the moment that I would capture now? Spring is a time of new beginnings, but also remembering. And with Easter just around the corner, I'm thinking bunnies. Pretty much, it's just an excuse to work with Angora fibre, which comes from the Angora rabbit. Although other animals are also called Angora, their fibre goes by a different name. I chose Merino as the base fibre for this blend, and silk noils from my home-grown silk for some added texture. I begin with a layer of wool before adding the textured fibres to make it easier to remove the fibres when blended. I am aiming for a textured yarn, and the best way to get that is to embrace texture in the fibre prep. This is a diz but a large button would do as well. Using the diz on the drum carter gives some of the advantages of combing. It better aligns the fibre, but still has the ease of drum carding. It's a push-pull action. The hole in the diz limits how much fibre will go through at one time. It's a bit like drafting and how our hands choose how much fibre is fed into the wheel. Too much fibre and the hole jams. We have to stop, back up, adjust, and start again. Oh, look at all those lovely nests. How did you get in there? What? My dream for this was to take the spinning wheel outside and spin beneath the flowering cherry trees. Sometimes the moment we get isn't the one we hoped for. And the moment is rain. The spinning wheel works just as well inside and the slubby yarn matches my mood. Fluffy, happy thoughts to be spinning such pretty fibre and tight twist frustration at how wet the weather is. Looking at the blue scarf, I spun textured singles with a light twist, relying more on the weaving to hold this together than the twist. And it worked! For this scarf, I shall trust that the fibre knows what kind of scarf it wants to become. I'll simply be here to capture the moment. When I wove the blue scarf, I didn't yet have any weaving equipment. I wasn't even certain if I was cut out for weaving, so I borrowed an Ashford knitter's loom from the yarn shop. I like the rigid heddle style, and I find the simpler the tool, the more of the weaver is captured in the cloth. This time I borrowed an Ashford rigid heddle loom. With direct warping like this, there is no need of extra equipment and it is easy to improvise to get the warp the right length.
Once the yarn is on the loom, it is threaded in either a slot or an eye, and how the heddle moves will influence which yarn is on top as the weft passes through. A mistake while threading or a metaphor for the moment? Either way, I'll leave these empty and see what variations of texture it will make. I chose this moment for the beauty. Finally, a rain-free afternoon. The project isn't done until it's finished, so let's see what transformation we get when we fold the cloth, water, a bit of soap, and agitation. We'll create a cohesive cloth from the woven web, and even fluff up the bunny fibre to the delightful halo that is Angora. <laughs>